All right, we're gonna try this one again. So today I wanna to talk about balanced binary trees in Emacs Lisp. This is uh, related to an earlier post on data structures. This one is, is more advanced than kind of the base level data structures that I talked about at that time. So a binary tree is, is kind of the, depicted graphically here. It is a data structure where you have these nodes and each node can go one of two ways and that's the, the binary part of it. And it's something that makes it very easy to search and insert and find elements in it. And Emacs provides the AVL tree library for making a sorted list that you can insert new entries in and access the elements in that list. So this library is built into Emacs and it's pretty old from 1991. Um, and it provides this self-balancing binary tree and it lets you insert, delete, and retrieve data um, in a, at least order log n uh, way. So it, it's not quite as good as a hash table, that is a constant lookup cost, but it's better than a list, which is probably order n. So, so what I'll do today is illustrate um, how I use and how I've thought about the AVL tree and I'll show you kind of briefly how it's, how it's used in the Cymax journal. All right, so the first thing um, that I'll do is, is create an empty uh, tree. So we, we have to use the AVL tree create function. And this takes a comparison function that takes two things and determines which one is, is less than or bigger than uh, the other. Um, let's, so, so we're going to do string, we'll do less than. And just for so we get that right. Um, the compare function takes two arguments, a and b, and returns non-nil if a is less than b and nil otherwise. So it's how, we're, how it decides which way to go in, um, in the tree. And when we make it, it is uh, just this. This is some kind of Lisp uh, syntax for, for reading. And then you see here we have a vector and the, the comparison function. All right, this list is, this tree is empty. So the first thing we'll do is, is enter something. So we do AVL tree enter. We have to give it the tree and then um, I'm just using strings here. So we'll, we'll just enter this and that just returns C, it's not that helpful. And if we now look at the tree, it's also not that helpful. So notice running this again does not insert another C. So these are, these are uh, somewhat unique. And I don't know if it's a good idea, but you could probably use this as a way of doing that, making a unique uh, set of numbers. And so what we want is to see the flattened version of this. So we'll do AVL tree dash flatten. And let's put up here the results code so that we see it as a list, All right? So now we have a view of this as a list. And if I add CC here, then it puts in a second one. If I put in AC, it goes in before it, and A will go in before that, and ZA will go at the very end, and we can keep inserting these, and this list stays sorted all along, um, like that. Maybe let's try capital D just to see where that goes. So capital letters are sorted lexically at the very beginning. All right, so now the next thing you might want to be able to do is find out if something is a member of the tree. And so we use AVL tree member for that. Let's say, uh, let's see if C is a member and it is. And if you put in something that is not, then you just get uh, nil. So if I put in G here, then we get uh, nil as a member. And it's easy to delete things from the tree AVL tree delete from the tree. Let's delete CC. And then we'll look at the flattened tree again. So this has just removed the CC from it. Like that. So I've shown you the, the three main things that you do, insert, retrieve, and delete. There are a bunch of uh, functions for iterating over over the tree. So we'll just look at one AVL um, dash tree dash map F. This is a, a kind of an aggregation function. You provide a function for the first argument. We'll just use identity. 
So that's going to take the each element here. And then we'll, we'll concat these together and apply that on the tree. That will take each one of these and string them together. Um, maybe just for fun, let's try upcase. That puts them all in uppercase. And if you want this to be in reverse order, uh, then we, we just put true here and that will reverse it. So we can do a couple of other, I'll show you two more um, here, AVL tree first. That will give us the first element. And if we look at last, then it gives you the last element. Um, so those are, those are a couple of, of those ways uh, to do this. So where I came across this library was in thinking about my Cymax journal library, um, which I use on a daily basis. And I open a file and it's stored by year, by month, by day. And so I have this um, long years of, of these entries now. And I wanted a way to easily navigate back and forth. So I could go to the last journal entry or the previous journal entry or the next journal entry. And the best way I thought to do that was was to keep this binary tree and be able to um, go uh, through it. So let's find let's find Cymax journal and have a look at how it's done. So here I use um, this, the Cymax journal. It, it, there's a whole setup in here for for setting up the the dates. So here um, I get all of the entries. So basically we, we get all of the entries in the root directory. And as long as it's an org file that matches this, uh, this pattern, which is year, month, day, then it will create an entry um, where the function that I used here is to just check is the date less than uh, the previous one. And as long as it is, then we enter it into, uh, into our tree. Then we have um, a couple of views here. So let's see this one. This one, this one will return all of the entries. And then this one will return um, the AVL tree. So this is now the sorted list of, of entries. And eventually down here, you know, you see these, uh, these are the sorted list of everything that's in there. Um, we can find uh, and mark entries in the journal for the calendar because we have them and we have them in order. Um, let's see. Going to the next entry, we get the um, entries that are here. Here I can get the position of the entry and then I'm able to get uh, to the next entry. So I'm probably not using this in, in particular because it's efficient in order login to find the next entry. It's just the inefficient way of getting the sorted list uh, of those entries and then being able to navigate these uh, like that. Um, it might be interesting to work that out, but um, this works so well as it is that I mostly use it for maintaining a sorted list of, of those entries. All right, so that um, maybe isn't the, the best use of, of a binary balance tree, but it's interesting that it exists and it's not that hard to use. So if you have a need for um, a binary balance tree, AVL tree will come to uh, your rescue. All right, so that is, uh, that's it for today.